What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, it's Saturday afternoon, and uh, I'm doing a little running around tomorrow. I'll be headed back up to Harrisburg to finish off that bathroom. Finish him! And we are knee deep in the combine. We've got quarterbacks and uh, receivers today. Uh, we got the big offensive linemen uh, tomorrow and so on. We've had Jerry Jones speaking on a number of things, um, a number of things uh, yesterday, or I should say last night, um, from praising Trey Lance, saying that, you know, even if they don't get the deal done with Dak, there's other ways of them to go all in. Uh, saying that uh, there will be better and dominate uh, next year. Now, I was just shared by my man James Nooks. James Nooks um, shared a Jerry, excuse me, a update from Ian Rappaport. Ian Rappaport, yeah, Ian Rappaport. Um, that Ian Rappaport says that Tyron Smith will not be returning next year. Let me say that again. Tyron Smith will not be returning next year, or is unlikely, excuse me. That means you're telling me there's a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. But it may be that they finally kind of said, yeah, this is it. Now, here's one of those things. There's sometimes you don't necessarily get the whole picture of what happens, okay? When we brought back here, here's what they did last year, and this is what I want you to understand. Um, they went from his about $14 million deal to an incentive latent contract that um, was about half. It was about $7 million. And everybody's like, yeah, man, great thing. They brought back Tyra Smith, um, and they saved money on the cap. But here's what you have to understand, because I didn't realize this until I was looking at our cap numbers couple of things that the Cowboys have done is they've dumped money into future years when they've restructured. I thought that they were just restructuring and taking through the course. See, what they used to do when you restructured the deal was you take the length of the contract and if you say we're going to turn and convert this into guaranteed money, you divide it by the length of the contract. And then that way, if it were, you know, you got five years and you took off 20 million from that, you divide that by five years, you add four years to each of those years. So you save $16 million for that year, but you basically are paying it off over five years. So basically, you've done refinancing and stuff at your house. Okay, with Tyron Smith, what they did was they added a voidable year and they took that $6 million and they moved it into this year. So whether Tyron Smith ends up re-signing another contract with us, we still have $6 million right there for this year. And they did the same thing with Dak when they did one of his restructurings. They've dumped $36 million into a voidable year, 2025. So in 2025, we've got a $36 million hit in dead money <coughs> Excuse me, for Dak. <clears throat> so unless they restructure the deal, they restructure the deal, no problem. They can spread that out on some more years, probably add some more avoidable years, and deal with that in the future. In the same way, the reason why Jalen Hurts' contract is so low is in the avoidable year, they got $96 million that's due to him, which is fine if he ends up being the quarterback for him for the next eight or nine years. If it ends up being that they decide after this year he's not the guy and they move on, then they've got to deal with that money that was guaranteed. But be all that as it may, Tyra Smith not coming back now creates opportunities for others and questions on what happens with Tyler Smith. Does Tyler Smith now become your left tackle? Because clearly it's Zach Martin, Tyler Smith. Those are your two best offensive linemen. And Biotis is gone. Terrence Steele is your third best then. <clears throat> and the way he played last year, that ain't saying much. 
that ain't saying much. But they do have bass that they do like at center. But that means then you definitely are going to need to get either a guard or a tackle. And I don't know how Tyler Smith feels about being tackle or guard right now. We know Zach Martin, when he had to play tackle one time, got injured and is like, I'm a guard. I'm not playing tackle. Screw that. It'll be interesting to see which way it goes. Because I will say, if you're looking at the draft at 24 and you're saying that we're going to address the offensive line, your left tackles are premium. You're gonna get, you know, you're gonna be down to probably the fourth or fifth best left tackle prospect by the time the Cowboys draft. If you talk about guard, you might have the second or worst case third best prospect at guards. So you could be looking at this and saying, yeah, we can get a good tackle, but you may be able to get one of the best prospect at guard. It all depends on um, what Tyler Smith, how he feels about being tackle versus guard. Um, if this is true, and again, I just it just came across here while I was driving. Um, this is um, a big shift on the Cowboys. Now, I don't know if this means he's retiring or if he's just planning on going elsewhere, that he's just done, that he's looking at it as, I just need a team that's ready to win a Super Bowl uh, like Trent Williams went to San Francisco figuring I'm just going to get out of the uh, cesspool that is Washington and I'm going to go someplace where I'll be appreciated and have a chance to compete for a Super Bowl. Um, not that they've won a Super Bowl or anything, mind you, but you, you see that San Francisco is definitely better suited than the commanders are, although the commanders do have $91 million in the number uh, three pick, uh, number two pick in the draft. So they're, they're an actually a good position to change the narrative. Um, Tyron Smith, if this is the end of his career, I'm going to say he was one of the first autograph signings, actually the second autograph signing that I ever went to. And Tyron Smith was a great player. And unfortunately, the last few years have taken a toll on his body, his back, his knee, his elbow, and so on. Because football, it's a brutal sport. And I remember meeting Tyron Smith the first time at Chantilly, Virginia. And I have been blessed because of my wife and having her job at United Way. In 2012, the NFL did a Play 60 billboard campaign with United Way. And they would have one player from each NFL team. And I remember... <coughs> excuse me. And I remember... <clears throat> Tracy um, asking about different players on the Cowboys. This was the great thing about her and working United Way. She wasn't a, the huge football fan. She could be impartial because she wasn't like me. A cowboy, it's, it's hard to be a Cowboy fan and doing what she had to do. And so she would come to me and say, who would be a player that would be good that has definitely staying power? And I said, Tyron Smith would be. I said, Tyron Smith's going to be here a long time. And I remember meeting Tyron Smith at the autograph signing show, knowing that he was going to be the one that was in the Billboard campaign. And this was in July, a CSA show. And I remember telling him, I'll see you in two weeks. And he was like, Okay, and we were at training camp, and this is back when training camp was fun, when they had two-a-day practice. They had a morning practice, afternoon practice, and where the townhouses are over there, that's actually where they had bleachers, and there were trees. There was actually shade over there, and so you were in the shade, you were sitting on the bleachers, you were close to the field and things, and they had practice, and we were setting up in the end zone to go ahead and do the photo shoot. We had Martin, we had Tracy, and I had Joe Boo. And being there, and here comes the community director from the Cowboys and Tyron Smith. And I looked at Tyron Smith and I said, I told you, I said, I told you, um, we'd be seeing you in two weeks. And he's like, I'll be damned. And um, yeah. He was definitely one of the great ones, and I look forward to seeing him in the Hall of Fame.
All right, got to run in here in the store, people. I'll see you soon.